Technology has changed our lives. It has changed how we connect to one another, how we communicate with one another, and how we understand our environment. And it has changed how we do science. There is a special group of chemists and physicists able to make important scientific contributions without going to the lab to do experimental work. Computational chemists, of which I am one, need only the ability to run calculations in a computing cluster and a computer with internet access to do their work. Students in my research group train as computational, physical organic chemists. Our goal is to build upon and advance knowledge as we work on problems of environmental, biochemical, or chemical relevance. The problems we have been working on recently has advanced our understanding of isotope effects on the thermodynamics of chemical systems of significant relevance for the Canadian Nuclear Agency. Like water, or simply water, has the most well-known chemical formula, H2O. Heavy water has two deuterium atoms in its structure with the formula D2O. Light and heavy water have very similar chemical properties most of the time, but slightly different physical properties. D2O is the solvent used in Canadian design can do nuclear reactors, which operate under hydrothermal conditions, that is, very high temperature and pressure. Can do operators want to know if the pH and redox control conditions within the pressure tubes could be changed to reduce corrosion? If we are successful, this may extend their lifetime and reduce maintenance of the reactor and its components. This research also contributes to advancing knowledge in chemistry. Professor Tremaine's research group at the University of Guelph is one of the very few studying the thermodynamics of chemical systems under ambient and also under hydrothermal conditions from an experimental point of view. In a chemistry lab, it would take years to do what theoretical chemists can do in a matter of months. After a research team became involved with this project, we were able to unravel in a few months the difference in behavior of more than 70 acids. We asked ourselves whether we could theoretically reproduce any of the available sets of experimental data. If we can reproduce, then we can predict. As it turned out, we could. These results has huge implications. We have made these discoveries without setting foot in a traditional lab, but making use, of course, of previous experimental work. Now, new theoretical work can be performed on other chemical systems, and a chemist in the lab can take the theoretically derived data and use it as a foundation upon which to build. My name is Dr. Nelaine Moradies, and that is my TRU research story. <laughs>